all our way that the University of Johannesburg is no longer a local university, but is now a global institution of choice that is now anchored in Africa and dynamically shaping the future. Uh, as you are also aware, that the uh, University of Johannesburg came into existence through the, the match that we, we had three universities. That is Red African University, uh, that is uh, West Technical, and then part of Western. Uh, that was in 2005. But today, as we celebrate the 10 year of success, we can only equate this to good governance in the university. Uh, we can only equate this to good leadership in this university. We therefore we deem it necessary to, to really engage and deliberate more, especially during these trying times in our country. As we know that as leaders, our country has the most, more especially right now, where they seem to be less credible leaders uh, that are responsible for higher offices. They seem to be less leaders with integrity that occupy higher offices. So the prime objective of this event is to engage and deliberate. Of course, I will be taking care of the program and of course, if in any way I, I, I do not meet your standard, you will pardon me, but this is the beginning of the events that are to come. There's going to be more of this because we believe that we can only share with you what the university has achieved and we believe this is a visionary university that uh, young as it is, I mean, I'm going to take you through some of the achievements. We are number five in South Africa, as uh, uh, Prof. Marwana, uh, we in the term of the top universities. We are, we are ranked 63 uh, in terms of the points in the universities, which is Brazil, Russia, uh, India, China, and South Africa. And, and these are some of the achievements that we believe that if there is anything convocation can help to strengthen this university going forward is to demonstrate the good governance. So in that regard, I will be your program director and I hope we have a productive engagement. And of course, like I have said, that this is the beginning of a series of events that are going to, to be uh, about leadership. So, I'm hopeful that everyone is a program leader. I'm not sure if anyone do not have. Is there anyone who do not have the program leader? You do not have, sir. Okay, so. And, okay, okay. Yeah, but it will be good that we, we get to the program so that you can see what, what is exactly. Uh, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll see to it now. But without too much waste of time, uh, by my left side, I wish to introduce our Deputy Vice Chancellor, uh, uh, Professor Marwana. Uh, he, he is going to, to welcome us. He is going to, to open this uh, event, and, and then we can begin to, to do what we're supposed to do. So, yeah, thanks, Prof. President of the Convocation, Mr. Manin Mukonto, uh, distinguished guests, uh, some of the guests that I'm seeing here, like Justice Malala, I see them uh, on TV. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great pleasure for me
to welcome you, uh, especially our alumni, to the University of Johannesburg. The University of Johannesburg is the largest university in Johannesburg. I'm not too sure whether you are aware of that. We are the largest university in Johannesburg with 50,000 students. Almost twice the number of students as our neighboring institution has. And I think with size comes responsibilities. It is quite evident that um, as a country, our state of leadership leaves much to be desired. And I'm sure during the, the proceedings, we are going to hear much more of what needs to be done. Uh, and for the convocation, especially the president of the convocation, to gather all these people who are quite influential in our society to deal with the question of leadership, not just at university sector, but in the country, I think is very, very key. Our problems are actually quite huge, whether it is in the economy, for example, in the economic space. Our country has just been downgraded to junk status. And some people were actually saying that it is a good thing. How can a junk status be a good thing? It can't. And part of the reason why some people are going to think it's a good thing is probably because they do not know how the global economic dynamics actually works. A country that is as uh, exposed in terms of trading uh, as uh, South Africa is cannot isolate itself from the rest of the world. So leadership means being able to understand what is around us globally and be able to act accordingly. On the social space, there's been quite a great deal of violence, particularly directed at women. And this is not, it, it does not reflect who we should be as a people. And again, Leadership should be at the forefront of this. Very, very key. At the political level, uh, which is obviously linked to the economy, uh, we, can, we all know that uh, 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 our leadership is actually failing. But I hope, President, that uh, out of this uh, deliberation, it will be very clear to everyone in the room that leadership is not just the elected po uh, politicians. Leadership is not just the people in industry. All of us are leaders in our own right. And if we do not do what we are supposed to do, to be good leaders, to be visionary, uh, to be ethical, uh, then we fail as a society. Now, given all these challenges that I have painted, where are we going as South Africa? How will South Africa look like in 30 years' time? If people around this room do not have an idea where we are going, then we are indeed in trouble. Because it is you, uh, the people who are around this uh, room, who are going to chart a way forward. It's not some political organization, it's not some political process, it's not some document that has been written where, 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 whenever it has been written, whether it is the National Development Plan, it is actually us that are going to make it happen. I am reminded of, uh, 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 of my travels around the world. I was educated in, in North America and Europe. And one of the people that I, uh, I spent quite a great deal of time with were people from Japan. I mean, these are classical people who talk less and do more. And we can learn quite a great deal of us. Uh, when I was an undergraduate, uh, I had the classmate who came from Tokyo, Yoichiro Endo. And the man, when I say a man is quiet, I mean, it's an understatement. The man is very quiet. But what 
he, what he could do as a student uh, in terms of ideas was actually quite amazing. So what I am saying is that as a society, we should start doing more than we talk. We have had all the plans, whether it is the Freedom Charter, whether it is our constitution, whether it is the National Development Plan. Now the African Union has a vision uh, 2063. We have talked enough. It is time to act. And the time to act is now. If we don't act now, it will be too late. And I think that is one lesson that I hope uh, when we get out of here, we will know that everything, uh, all progress that has to come from this society will have to come from us. The challenges that we are facing are quite daunting. I was reading a report about uh, the economy of the future. I am told that 70% of the jobs that currently exist will not exist in 30 years' time. And the reason why they are not going to exist is because uh, automation is going to define every aspect of our lives. They call it the fourth industrial revolution. This is the era in which we live in. As a society, we can say, no, it has nothing to do with us. Is something that is happening in China, is something that is happening in, 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 in Europe, is something that is happening in North America. But let me assure you, ladies and gentlemen, whatever happens outside South Africa also has an impact on what happens here. If somebody is making a car in China and they decide to use a machine that is very efficient, a robot that is very efficient, what it means, it means some car manufacturing companies in Roslyn in Pretoria or in Port Elizabeth are actually going to close down. So it is important for us to understand that wherever the world is moving, we cannot afford not to move in that direction because it has an impact on our competitiveness as a society and as an economy and as a continent. Now, the University of Johannesburg takes the issues of generating ideas for the future very seriously. And the way we achieve that is through research and development. I am glad to announce, especially to our alumni, that we have just overtaken Stellenbosch University as a research-intensive university. And I think this is When uh, we started this journey of knowledge production, I never knew that we were going to overtake Stellenbosch University. And of course, research is not done for its own sake. Research must solve the problems that confront us as society. And uh, if you look into our annual report, uh, you will realize that indeed what we are doing is actually directed by the needs of our society. If you look at some of the research that we are doing, they deal with issues of poverty, they deal with issues of industrialization, they deal with issues of uh, international relations, very, very key. We never knew that international relations will have an impact on our economy. If you look at MTN, much of its uh, financial difficulties is because of the international relations, particularly with regards to uh, the businesses it is doing in Nigeria. And it would not have happened that way if they had taken our political sciences along to guide them as to how they navigate the Nigerian market. And much of our industries are going to the rest of the continent. And as the University of Johannesburg, we are open for business so that we can be able to take our industries to the rest of the continent, to take our people to the rest of the continent, and ultimately to build a South Africa that is actually a developed economy. It might take a, a more than our lifetime, but it should be our goal that the South African economy must be developed, and this means investment in education, 
and this means investment in research and innovation. I thank you very much, uh, and Justice, uh, thank you very much for coming. I was remarking that I only see you on, on TV, <laughs> giving the politicians a, a tough time. <laughs> But it is actually quite important for us to progress as a nation, you know, challenging one another, whether it is in the public platforms or it is in the private platforms. I thank you very much.